So, I've got the rigs off of Grant. As I use all of them, I've got one of them on the end. I've got my match rod rigged up. I put the brolly here because the wind's off my back. It doesn't look a bit if I spin around, you can see the ripples way over there. Now, they normally say fish in the teeth of the wind for the fish, but I fished it before close into the margins. I did okay on the pole. So, I've just got the feeling why does it have to be a pole, you know, with the elastic? Why can't it be those rigs that I've got here, like this? Why can't you just go into a tackle shop, and I love them to death because they're all rigged up and they are shotted up. A variety of different types you can get, um, different floats and everything, as Grant said. Why can't I fish them off a match rod? Because there might be beginners out there that don't want to do, let's sit down out this wind. Oh, God, I've been working, doing a hedge this morning, sawing a palm tree down about 15 feet high. What an epic, so my wrist is killing me. I'm thinking, why can't I just tie the rig on, which I have done, just with a regular blood blood knot, and just fish? So I'm going to plumb the depth, see what it is just in here. I've already put a couple of pellets of ground bait in. I'll show you what I've got. I've got a little bit of ground bait there. I've got three hours, basically, fishing. I've got some mags. In they go, because the roach are going to demolish them. And the perch. I'd like to have a bit of everything, to be honest. Don't particularly want big carp, but this time I've got a running line, not elastic to stretch and disappear off into the rushes somewhere. So we'll see how we get on. Of course, I'm still governed by the link, the hook link, the breaking strain of this, like five pound, four pound hook link. So I'm still governed by that. But I've got a six pound line on my reel. So obviously the four pound hook link is gonna go before that. In fact, what goes before that is generally the knot between the two. Really good day for fishing, I would suggest. Bit of southwesterly airflow, a lovely thick blanket cloud, which I normally hate, but we've had so much hot weather, it's just nice to try and get, you know, a decent bit of westerly, southwesterly traditional airflow for us. There is a million water spiders down there. I've never seen so many. Maybe you can see them down there. Yeah, I'll toss a stone in. It does nothing, they've eaten it. There are so many down here, guys. I'm not quite sure why there should be so many. But there are some small ones. And I talked to Andy once, and he was telling me he thinks they might have just been hatched out and breeding. And you can see that's a small one there. Give me an idea just down there. Anyway, it's no good talking about water spiders. Let's get a bait on the hook. Now, I'm going to suggest roach. Two maggots on the hook, perch, three maggots or four maggots on the hook, I've got red maggots, and if I want to keep away from both of those, I won't keep away from the perch, they've got a big mouth, is um, four maggots, a bunch of maggots for maybe, I hope, a tent or bream. So, all I've done is put some uh, Bailey's feed in there, a little bit of ground bait, nothing fancy, actually I can go a lot closer than this with my chair fish right on the edge and I'm squeezing it like this look quite hard to keep the maggots inside inside the ball of ground bait now let's drag the old chair up the main thing is and I'm the worst one for it heavy handed I've only got three hours fishing bosh I've got to get a load in quickly to get the fish feeding possibly wrong it generally brings the old dreaded carp in so if I get a carp, fine, but I'm really off. I'd like a tench, I've got to be honest, I'd like a tench. I've had a nightmare of tenches last year. Blank, two blanks in a row overnight. Tench fishing the peak of the season, bizarre. All right, let's get a couple of maggots on. There's the maggots. A few whites in there as well. Generally find the whites get mullered by the roach if you're on a single hook. I've got, I think, one biscuit for the afternoon because now I'm realizing I might be hungry. Because I'm filming on my own, I think what I'm going to do is save keep getting up. I'm going to leave the camera bag here. I'm going to put the mat here. I've seen other people do this. And then you're close to the water, aren't you? you know? Now, for luck, sometimes, quite a lot of times, I do this. I dip it past the yolk twice. I shake it off. I flip it. I rest it slightly at a very slight angle. So for those who don't know, the venue is the world famous Watmore, just down the road from me. 
so I come. I'm going to plumb the bottom here to get the depth. I've got the weight, it's got a little cork in the bottom of it, so it goes into the hook, hanging by the hook, and it should pull this tiny float off. I've got to show you this float. I'm very, very well taken. I'm fishing with, normally fish with two rods, I'm fishing with one rod because I did so well last time with this tiny float. It's got a little pinch, pinch, pinch. It's, it's held on three different sort of valve rubber bits. Shots down nicely. They got one called a dibber, which we were, did have in the shop. Just so you know, let's turn that over. I'll put the two together. See how long and slender this one is compared with that one? I know you said, Grant's saying, you know, they do tend to use that for bigger fish. Trouble is with all the small fish in here, it's continually going under. I'm continually striking and I might spook something. So I'd sooner have a good pull down bite. So I'm going to plumb the depth. If I go out, you might be able to see it. God, it's windy now. Right, it's gone straight under the water. All I'm doing, because I have plumbed this before, there's a ledge there. And it is right there. Right, I'm on it. I'm on the bottom there, and the bait is laying on the bottom. So if I go out any farther, look, if you watch that float, I think you're going to see this, guys. I'm going to lower the rod. Bang. The whole length of the float, it will, the shot will make the float cock, but you can see, I can feel the lead there. And I can feel it bumping on the bottom, like that. So I'm going to be laying the length of that float on the bottom. Obviously in here it'd be very shallow, it'd be laying, all of this would be on the bottom. But I haven't altered the shot in here. I did have a cart on this rig before and I've tied my own hook on this. I've lost a little bit, but there's shot there, but there's no way I'm moving them because they're put on specially. So basically the length of that float is here. So these two should, should lay on the bottom and stop it dragging out of position. And of course with a 13 foot match rod, I can just move it slowly, but only fishing in close. Always, always put this old plum weight away. It's about 50 years old, I joke not. So I'm gonna start by trying to catch a roach. So I'll probably go two maggots. I tend to pop them up over the eye of the hook like that. and then just nick the fat in first, about halfway through. Let's give them a pinch of ground bait as well. It's gonna be a little bit farther out. I've got sort of two swims there, does that make sense? Oh, there's a fish boiled there already. I feel, listen people, a roach on the first cast. That's how confident I am. I don't cast, I'm just lowering the float. It's going to go there. And roach first cast came off the hook. Check the maggots. Now if you pull them too far up. Okay, first problem I've come up against. I'm going to have to shorten that loop. That does, when I talk to Grant about it, about the knot. I'm going to change that loop. It does catch, it's quite a fine tip ring there. Sometimes if you pop them too far over the hook, they will slide up over here and you see the gap between the maggot and the hook. So I just pop that off, put a fresh maggot on there, fat in first, pop it on and roll it around the bend of the hook. So to me that sort of looks like one maggot. Here we go. I'd say that's gone already. Hopefully it'll get, it's gone. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to shorten that rig up there. So there we go, first fish out of the pot is a roach. And that's because I'm using two maggots. So I could do it again just to show you. Just lower it down. Because it sinks so slow, I've got a feeling the roach are going to have it anyway. You might be able to see the float. 
I'll leave this running as long as I can. And there's the bite. And this one's a perch. Small perch. So the rig here, there's the float, that's the depth. But that tip ring is quite small and fine and I can feel that my loop from my main line to the top fixing loop of this rig, this pole rig, is actually catching a little bit. I don't think it's hugely important. In fact, what I'm going to do is, this is a single white maggot, which will probably now go straight away. And I feel a roach here, if I'm right. It's gone. So I find, generally, if you look at that, the weight of that fish is not pulling the loop through, so I'm going to have to shorten that up quite a bit. Yeah, nice small roach, but I'm going to put the uh, bait size up now. I'm going to put a bunch of maggots now on. So what you could do, I just go, look, there's a, I think you can see this, a thin end and a fat end. Come back here, you don't want to go on the hook. I just go through a sort of what I call a quarter or half of the fat end if I'm only fishing a couple of maggots like that. Any more than that, and the thickness of the maggots, I feel could mask the hook. If you're fishing, say, four maggots, I don't believe this is gonna be long before it goes, it's gone. Better fish. Big perch. Oh, goodness me, what is this? Yes, a nice perch. There's one thing perch do like, it's red maggots. Only a little one, but you know what, they're getting fat here and they go over two pounds in here. One of those on a match would be nice. So if I want to sort of ease off from those a bit, and it's going to be difficult to get away from them, I'll get the thin end of the maggot, roll it around the bend, and then just nick it through the pointed end. So there's less bulk around the actual bend of the hook. It's just my way of doing it, you know, I'm no uh, expert, I'll just go fishing. I've got five maggots there, Right, they're all hooked on. Look, big mess, big mess of maggots. But the bulk of the body is is down here, and the pointed end is there, leaving the hook point clear. Now, let's see what we get with that. It's either I doubt it'll be a roach. I may be wrong. I might have to go back a little bit. There you go. It's a perch again. So it doesn't really matter how many maggots you put on. These guys will get it. They're going to come even closer. If I throw in loose ground bait, it's in a cloud. I think the roach just muller it and it's gone very quickly. Goodness me, we're going backwards now. It's even smaller. I think the next one will be an egg. Well, one thing's proven for sure. That you don't have to have a pole to fish a pole rig. Let's go straight away. I missed that one. Oh, there's a bigger roach. You guys, can you see how close I'm fishing? My, my modern roof's back here. This is a standard 13 foot metro, it's back there. So I'm, I'm well away from the swim. These bites I'm getting could be 
uh, just roach. You've got to remind me, we've got to stop catching fish like this and actually shorten up that loop rig. Yeah. I see it, look, it's, it sticks. It sticks in the tip ring there. Because it's got all slack line here. Look at this, look, if I jerk it, it clears. So let's shorten that up a good deal. And this is just me saying this. I think the secret is this end rig with a super delicate float there. That's what I think it is, why the rig's so successful. And the fine shot. See, the, the shot, I've got no chance of putting those on, so I have to buy the hook finished rig made up. But there's no reason why I couldn't put a bigger hook on there to keep away from the small fish. Mash up some ground bait like this into a paste and fish a piece, a piece, I can't even say that, a piece of paste. Who can say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper? A peck of pickled pepper, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper, where's the peck of pickled pepper Peter Piper picked? I haven't even had a drink yet. Fold it around the hook, I squeeze it flat so it makes quite a big bait. That should, should get rid of the roach and perch. So now I'll be looking for bigger fish, i.e., although I've got a small hook, bream, tench, or proverbial carp. So it'd be interesting to see what takes that. This is almost a sit back and relax one. <laughs> Perhaps not relax. Right, let's bring that in and shorten that rig up. This is annoying me. Yeah, it can't come out of the tip ring. There's a lovely dragonfly down there, keeps coming in. Every time I hold the float up and spending the uh, maggots in the air, he thinks it's an insect or something. But look, here's the problem. There's the loop, there's the end of the pole rig, and look how small these rings are. So if I pull it through there, when I come to the tip ring, I can feel it snickering through there. And that could, there, right there. There it comes. Look, there, you can see that, watch it goes, it just sticks on these rings. So I'm gonna shorten that and tie it with a different knot. I'm gonna use what's called an Albright knot. That means I should be able to basically wind it in and out the rings without that sort of snickering effect. And it does need shortening up about that much. So you might be able to see there, there's the knot and there's the loop. So I'm gonna snip, snip, put it in my bag and tie them with a fixed all bright special knot. See now this knot, you probably won't see it with this camera, I'll do the best I can, pulls down like this and then the two tag ends can be snipped off and I haven't got that big loop going through. They're actually flashing and going through that now. See the little swirl on the surface? That's decent roach just demolishing the maggots on the way down. The bite is going to be bosh, gone. Oh yeah, bigger roach. And much easier. No, he's falling off. That's a nice size. Four maggots. Don't listen to me, it did not get rid of the roach. I go to balls of ground bait and they're little pellets, you know. Four maggots. Pinch of ground bait. Follow straight up. I'm just I'm not even casting people, it's the length of the rod. In fact, it's barely the length of the rod. They're on it, I can feel them mullering it straight away. I think you'll agree. Big size roach, nice ones. My method of thinking that you can just go, if you're a beginner, buy a pole rig, you know, the end rig, and just tie it on the end and fish with it, it's so good and delicate and that I feel that's what's catching me these fish because that float it doesn't dither it buries like that just like that squeeze it flat it will dissolve if you get a load of bites on it you'll find that uh, the fish has probably gone I've gone a little bit farther out this time trying to find that ledger it goes over here at what more and then drops 
There's a bite, another bite. That small fish had it there. See how the float goes under and comes up? And they'll just pause. And that's a way, way better roach. Oh, that's, oh, 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 Graham. That one's nearly a netter. Look at the, look at the quality of that. And that was on a pellet of ground bait. So people, listen, it doesn't always have to be just maggots. A bigger bait means possibly less bites, but might be worth waiting for in the shape of a better fish. I went to the outside ledge, people, and different species. Here it comes, tangled up around the fin, which they do get bream. Quite a nice bream, quite a nice bream, people. A bream that's nearly fighting. There we get in. Oh, my net's not. Now it's folded. So there. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? A nice bream. Now, bream are slimy fish. So when I've had a bream, I tend to get my nail and forefinger and just pull that slime up there. Don't get it on your lips or anything because it tastes disgusting and bitter. Not that I've eaten bream, but see that? That's horrible slime. Yucky, yucky, yucky. And I was told in Ireland, if you keep that on your line, the other bream won't come near you. Because they know their mate's been caught. I don't know, but I take it off because it's disgusting anyway. Straight in for, is that a rud? That's a rud. So they had rud, perch, bream and roach. Not bad, is it? It's one little rig. I'm only fishing one rod. I possibly haven't bought enough ground bait. But it is only a experimental little trip. don't see why I should go to a heavier float, I don't find the need to. If I can just get through the roach to the bottom, there's a good chance I can get a bream. Or a tench, tench would be nice. More roach. Well, a bigger pellet of ground bait seems to have done the trick here. I'm guessing it's a bream. Be nice if it's tench. My God, is that a roach? Is that a roach? That's a nice one. That's a netter grab, sorry. That's got to be net. I can't swing that one. That is a nice roach. Goodness me, I thought that was a small bream. That is a nice roach, is it not? Look, there's the tip of my hand. It's up past my elbow. <laughs> That's a big fat one. My well, guys, I must have had 30 fish now. Just the one bream, but a good mixture and definitely getting the better fish on the uh, pellets of ground bait. So I just made it up like that, a little bit of paste, pinching that on about, size of your small thumbnail here, a little bit bigger. Of course I could use a bigger hook on, I should be using a bigger hook really, but I am catching the fish, missing a few because the hook is too small for the size of the bait. But listen, what can you say? There's fish there. Lower it down. You might, I might not be able to see that float. A couple of little dips, and I'm on and off. It's something that people don't do. They feed ground bait, but they don't ever look straight on. They don't really ever think of using the ground bait. Well, you're feeding them with a food that they're eating, i.e. the ground bait. Why not make a paste up? And it balances off against the maggots. Maggots tend to get the smaller fish, but I find the paste gets a better fish. Just letting the camera roll this time. See if we can get a take to camera. That's sinking, sinking, sinking. That's on the bottom about now 
and when it goes under I always leave it a bit of a pause there missed him that's because I didn't pause long enough all you have to do is just get a ball like this uh, there and just keep working it and working it while you're watching the float keep I find pushing your thumb through it there and occasionally you might might want to damp your hand don't put the paste in the water it would be too much just get a little bit of damp on your hand and that'll be enough to make a paste on it and this has actually got ground bait pellets in it as well it's like kneading putty but of course everybody's got double glazing now so they don't remember what putty is indeed there's a generation there that don't even know what putty is other than play-doh to play with as a child but i've done plenty of putting puttying with a putty knife cutting back the old metal casement uh, glass and putting new glasses on the properties there we go all right let's see if we can catch another with this one pellet of ground bait and while you can still see that ring that's the time to bait up but unfortunately i hadn't organized myself that well doing the filming i put my paste don't put it in with your maggots or back with your ground bait keep it on a separate so i'll use the bait lid and just i push the hook into it just fold it pinch it once so this is what i call target fishing a little pellet of ground bait and maggots and it makes a circle when it goes in it's like a bullseye it's like a target so you can go bang go look i can still see the ring I'm going to pull it back and drop it straight down on the ring that that ground bait made when it went in. So I should, should get a bite from that. So that ground bait pellet's gone straight back down and there we go. It's a good job there's not any pike in here. They'd be loving this roach this size. Look at that one. Get yourself a plastic disgorger guys you just keep the line tight here put it in the slot slide it down the hook it's out job done get a bright color don't get dark colors so you can find them and generally it's best to buy a couple they're plastic you just get a, a couple of them i feel a bream coming definitely keep the rag with you I haven't seen much carp activity on the surface cruising or anything like that. Is that a roach? It's going well. You can see what I'm saying about compared with maggots that the ground bait paste actually does get a better quality roach. Barely a swing of that one, barely. Look at the size of it. I find it strange that we have to have all these kissy lovey dovey mats and, and antiseptic and everything for carp and yet we don't have to have a roach mat do we? We don't have to have a perch mat. Why is that? That'd be some form of discrimination against the other fish. I suppose not many people go fishing and talk to themselves or do they? Is there many out there? Do you guys talk to yourself when you're fishing? I mean I'm not talking to myself, I'm talking to you guys. If I didn't have a camera on my head running, you'd feel a little bit strange, wouldn't it? Somebody come along with a white coat. Oh, I missed that one. Now that reason is, the hook, as I mentioned, is too small for the size of bait I'm using. So they're just holding it like this, and my hook is pulling through. So I've got to go, to illustrate this, a much, a much smaller pellet uh, in relation to the size of the hook. And you see I've dropped off from the perch and I've got more roach now. Now that's a smaller piece, which I still missed. I'm going to try with a smaller piece of ground bait and see if that makes the connection better. Any little dippy bites I leave, I wait until it goes under for a millisecond, sort of holds under. I feel I'm due a bream.
on. Should be a better roach. Wow, that's a nice fish. That is a nice roach, that one. Don't see me net many roach. But that one's worth worthy of a net. There he is. Ground bait paste. Wow guys, getting bigger than ever now. Guys, I think I've got a tench. I think I've got a tench on just by the swirl it mate. In fact he's going for all the rushes. Probably gonna ping off. Got him out. Look at him go for the rushes again. Goodness me. He's in there somewhere. Usually these weeds are impossible to get a fish out of. I'm going to see if that'll probably dump the hook in there. That's generally what happens. Yeah, he's done me in the, in the rush. I don't know what you guys call this stuff. I call it spear braid. Look, it is a nightmare to get fish out of if you get fish in it, especially fish like barbel in a river. It was a tench, I'm 90% sure. And he's probably got the hook. He's gone, he's long gone, I think. But you never know, we're feeling our way down the line. Ooh. And this is all you get back for all that effort. Oh no, he's still there. <laughs> hand caught. A hand caught tension. Can you believe it? Can't believe I got him out of all this weed. That was a result. A wet sleeve, but worth it. There we go, it's not a big fish, is it? It's a nice fish to catch. Especially on a match rod. Fat little chappy as well. We're very lucky to get that one back. Bream, tench, perch, roach, and a rut. I think we've only got the carp left, but I'm getting down on bait because the roach are getting through it. Look at the weedy berry too, it's very lucky there. I think if I'd have just not pulled them, if I just pulled and pulled for a break, that would have been a bit, so the fact I could get my arm down in the water made the difference. Guys, I've been dropping maggots just over the edge here. There is a bejesus of a big carp down there. I mean a seriously big carp. I've just seen him swirl a couple of times. That's a good fish, he's still there. He's digging around for the maggots. Wow, that's a double. Oh, I missed one then. I think it's more than one there. It's so close. My hand is halfway down the rod blank. It'd be nice to finish with one carp. I think I may have to put the camera on my head for this, guys. So I've no idea when they're they're going to come in, go out, come in, go out. I'll gently lay the rod down. They can might as well have the last of the maggots going in. I'm not going to bother rigging up with that pole uh, outfit again. I'm going to use GP style, a hook, a BB shot, and lower it down there, see if I get lucky with one carp. I've got a little bit of ground bait maggots left. I might just as well 
get rid of it over the side there. Let him come in and have a good old dig around there. So all he's going to be doing is uh, his touch ledgering and hopefully I can see the rod pull over. As a practice, I just, I've got a bunch of maggots, I'm just going to, oh there, there's, there's the fish. Wait a minute guys, let's see if we can get lucky. He is right down there. That's a big fish. I'm washing the rod top now. I could put it in a float on, but he's so close. That's a big fish. Holy crap, that's a big fish. Whoa! That is a big, big fish. Come on. I've got him, and I've got him on a running line. Trust me, this is a really big fish. Match rod. There goes the lilies. We don't want the lilies. By the way, people, the match rods are not supposed to be used for fish like this. Holy schmoly, that's a big double. I don't think my net's big enough for this one. I'm keeping it low to try and turn him turn the fish over. And we don't need him going that spear blade stuff. I hope the rod doesn't break. It's a nice rod, but it's not meant for this. That's a big fish, holy sh holy schmoly. Are we going to come out of this with a, an incredible lump? I reckon that fish is 12, 14 pounds, 15 pounds. I'm glad I'm not using a pole on this one. He's just easing line off me at the moment, unfortunately. Heard the little tick <laughs> put it up a notch. Just want a chance of it. in a little bit then. This would make up for all that hedge trimming, digging and tree cutting and sawing I've been doing this morning, most of the afternoon. Ah, oh, and on earth I'm gonna get him in this net. But he's in. Oh, wow. That fish is 15 plus. That is a lump of a, of a mirror cart with a big fat belly. He's got the maggots there. <laughs> Look, ping, fell out. I wonder, I wonder if I've got scales. 14 pounds even, that one, people. That, I did think it was around about that. I knew it was a big fish. Let's get him back. 14, I'll settle for that. I 
think the one I saw earlier was way bigger. Way bigger. turned into quite a session multi-species fishing with a match rod Whew. I'm covered in yucky gunky stuff a wet arm from the tench but what a fish to finish off with well I've had a great time and as you see it can be done you can put just a pole rig on the end of a match rod and catch a load of fish it's just ironic I don't think I would have got that I couldn't have fished that floating that close, you know, on that weight line, a small hook. So I've just gone back to a hook, a shot, a BB, it's the old grand pulling style, fishing in the margins, touch ledgering, waiting for the pull of the fish, and came up with a big one. Don't happen all the time, occasionally I do get lucky. I could have one more cast out with a touch ledgering. I've just seen another carp down there, guys. She says, oh, I need my Avon rod. This one is so long. I find normally, oh no, he's still down there. Man, he must be all over the loose maggots I've been throwing in there. Oh, trust me, roach. I thought that was the carp. That's the problem that uh, these guys take it. That's a bigger hook and a bunch. Oh, there you go. And it spooks the uh, big fish you're after. Oh, well, that's plan B gone. It's a bit like barbell fishing, really, look. I mean, you can see I've got a kajunking great big bunch of maggots. And you can see where I'm just literally feeding, just down literally in front of me. But that roach would have spooked that carp, I feel. Probably have to wait a few minutes for him to come back. If he does. No, oh, he's still there. Just touch ledger in here, hopefully with this finger. I'll be able to feel something take. Oh. <laughs> Oops. I thought, I thought it was a carp, but in fact, it's a flying fish. A flying roach. That's the thing, obviously those roach are eating all the maggots as well, so I don't know how long a, a carp would actually stay down there. About ten maggots on a hook there, and the roach still took it. Mostly red maggots, and I've got mostly red maggots on the hook. But I'm going to tip it with a couple of white ones. It just might make the uh, carp sort of spot the white maggot first. And just bring him over closer if he sees that. Standing out a little bit more. Of course, Roach is going to see it as well. Don't actually see him down there now. I'm going to try further out while I've baited out there. That's a fish moved. I just keep the line going over the top of one, under one finger here, and up over the top of the other. And you'll feel it tug against the softer part of your finger there. Fish has come back again. Pretty sure he's down there. I could actually almost take that shot off to be honest because they might see that. I think there's fish back down there. Lower the maggots down. Oh, the 
this roach. These flying roach are so annoying. Every time I pull one out, it spooks the uh, the big fish. Well, Ben in the Rod tells his own story, people. Straight down there again. I've got, look, barely any maggots left. I've just been trickling them in. And uh, I'm hooked up again. I've no idea what size this one is. As long as he's out there, I've got a bit of a chance. Doesn't feel a heavy fish. I think after this, it is back home for a beer. Or well, of course, if this is a long fight, it might be tomorrow's breakfast I'm waiting for. Just don't get anything tangled in this stuff. Somebody tell me in the comments page, what do you call that? I call it a spear blade, because it's just got a spear on it. It's a nightmare of barbel fishermen if, on a river, if you get a fish in that. They generally plant the hook in it, disappear and you end up pulling for a break. There's a lady training a horse behind me, in case you wonder what the uh, talking is. She's having a conversation with a horse. Very slight feeling of being fouled, this one, I don't know. No, it's not. No, it's smaller fish. But just a feisty fighter. Well, we're getting him closer. Nothing like a stamp of the other one. It's still a fish, and I reckon that's eight or nine pounds. What a session. So there you go, guys. I'm pretty exhausted. Really enjoyed it, so you can go and tackle shop. You don't have to be grant shop, you can go and see any shop. See if you can get some of those pole rigs if you want to fish in the margins like that. Get real mixed fishing. And then, obviously, a bonus here. <laughs> Big fish in the margins as well. So it's bream, double figure cart to 14. Rud, roach, perch, tench. I'm running out of fingers. Thanks for watching Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We'll see you in the next one. I hope it's as successful as this. If not, well, I'll find something else to amuse you guys. See you then. Lovely. Right, so what we've got on these rigs, Graham, that I've dug out for you, they're just slightly different. So you've got a dibber rig. So a dibber rig, you'd be looking over the top and just be a dimple in the water. So as the dimple dips, you can strike. So it will just look like a dimple on the surface of the water. Yeah. And pop, and then just you bite. Is it for a smaller fish? Bigger fish, I would say. Bigger fish? Anything. Yeah, because the way they feed in the margins, it's it's just that the other fish do fish up in the water as well for yep. carp with them. Um, you've got different style there, so that's what I call a button dibber. I don't know what other people call it, but that's what I call that in, in my cabaret. Yeah. And then, obviously, you've got the dibber with a sort of a top piece as well, so you can see there's two different types there. Yeah, it is a little bit bigger at the top, yeah. Which you were saying, the roach would bash that, yeah, the yeah, fire yeah. too sensitive, that one might work a bit better for you, but you know, if you actually look at what that one's called, that's called a carp four, it's aimed at fishing for the carp in the gotcha. edge, really. Um, we're not stupidly heavy on this, your five pound main line to a four pound hook link, hook link yeah, with a size 18 hook. And these ones, that's the one I was using, it must have been like that one, I should think. Yeah, a nice fine top. So that's a nicer one for sort of, although again, it's a carp style float, it's an older style float now, a carp of three, but this is what I grew up fishing with. And I assume that just because it's got carp written on it doesn't mean you have to exactly. use it for carp. You know, you don't same, as away. If, <laughs> same as if your rod says a match rod, you don't have to fish a match to use yeah. it. It's, it's just a terminology for a name. So, that's a slightly heavier float that you might use in more windier conditions, trying to hold the bottom. Yep. And obviously you've got your slightly lighter float there as well.